Today I'm cutting open the Common Projects to check out the leather quality and see if they live up to the hype and that steep price tag. So these have been some of the more requested sneakers um, in the comment section. So what do you guys want to see next? I got Birkenstocks on the way. And a lot of people have been requesting the Air Force Ones. Which color do you guys want me to do? Just the all white again. Like, kind of like the all white theme we have going here with the sneakers. And it's time to announce the winner of the Shattered Backboard Wallet. And the winner is... Diego197501. Now to the info on the shoes themselves. The brand is Common Projects. The model is the Achilles Low. The color is white. Um, they're made in Italy and they cost around $425 online. Uh, supposedly they don't spend any money on advertising and marketing. And for my initial wear impressions of these, they are definitely narrow as to be expected from any style like this. They fit true to size. And the, the only thing I was kind of bothered by was my foot is sliding around all over the place in here because of the smooth leather on the lining and on the insole. And going along with the initial impressions when I first got these and opened up the box, the red flags were just going up all over the place. So let's start dissecting these and start addressing some of those red flags. So the first red flag, when I opened this box, I expected to see and smell that primo Italian vegetable tanned leather but instead I saw these little cross sections and at the heel here, blue on the inside of leather. And that is a telltale sign of a chrome tanned leather, which is faster to produce, cheaper to produce, and generally accepted that it's a lower quality than uh, vegetable tanned leather. It's not always the case, but I thought maybe just these smaller pieces might be just a cheaper chrome tanned leather and these bigger panels are a higher quality Italian veg tan. Um, so let's cut this toe open and the tongue and see, hopefully that's veg tan. So it is as I feared, it's, it's chrome tanned on the tongue and on the liner. The tongue is 1.5 millimeters and the liner is one millimeter even. When I saw the chrome tanned, I was concerned. So I called up Rocky Mountain Leather down in Salt Lake and asked them to send me their high quality all white leather samples for me to show you guys the difference between a cheaper chrome tan leather or just chrome tan in general and a high quality veg tan. So they sent me this piece of Italian uh, veg tan and they sent me this swatch of French goat skin and if you look at the cross section on the goat skin you can see there's no bluing in there and it's just an even color all the way through and if you look at the Italian um, cow leather you see there's no bluing in there either and the, the blue comes from the tanning process the chromium salts they use to turn the flesh into leather and is what turns it blue. And chrome tan leather isn't all bad. Some of the best, some of my favorite leather, um, Horween's Chrome Excel is a combination tan that's chrome tan and then retanned and vegetable tanning compounds. Um, and it works really good for work boots like Iron Rangers is an oil tan leather, which is basically a chrome tan leather with a lot of oils infused into it. It's really durable. It's more um, water resistant and it's kind of a self conditioning leather. So for a work application, chrome tan leather is really good for sneakers when you're not needing those properties, it's usually a cheaper way of getting around uh, making leather products. So next, let's see what's on the side panels and what kind of counter is on the heel. So it is the same leather that's on the side panels, the tongue, everything. Everything's a chrome tan, but the counter is a compressed leather counter. I did a quick burn test on it. It's self-extinguished and smelled like burning flesh, so it's a good sign it's leather. Uh, but it is a compressed leather, so it's the extra loose fibers reconstituted into a material for the counter. It's not a solid piece of leather. And then the one thing I really do like about this is they flip that last piece at your heel to the flesh out so those, that fuzziness is hitting your heel 
That makes it so your heel doesn't slip as much and uh, makes it easier to break in without getting blisters on your heel. Next, we're gonna test to see if this construction on the side here, these stitches are the only thing holding this sole on or if, there's, if it's also glued as well. Not a whole lot of glue, at least from the sidewalls here. It looks like there is some glue in the sole. I think I like that more though, because if you need to resole these and it was glued all the way around, you would be tearing up this sidewall and it might not look as good afterwards because with a leather like this, with a heavy finish on the leather, you don't actually pull the glue away from the leather. You're pulling the top layer of paint away from the leather and that makes it really ugly. It just makes it easier and cheaper to resole and actually make a resole possible. And I also did a durometer test on the sole compared to the Converse and the Vans because this feels really soft. And the results of the test is, the toaster will move. The Converse were 22 to 25, the Vans were 18 to 20-ish, and the Common Projects were 12 to 14. So significantly softer, so this is gonna wear out more, but it's also gonna be a little bit more grippy and a little bit more comfortable. So the next question I have is, which or what part of the cross section of the hide is this leather from? Is it the best stuff, the full grain? Is it top grain? Or is it the split portion? So the best way to tell usually is just to look at the cross section. So if you look at like this veg tan from Rocky Mountain Leather, you can see that grain pattern at the very top but I can't really tell on these ones. So a, an even better way to tell is just to bend the leather and take small slices out of it and see what's exposed. So if we do this on the full grain Italian veg tan leather, the first cut, I'm just removing that top layer of the pigment and you're exposing a different colored grain. And then the next cut, we're getting into the grain. Next cut, we're starting to see those pores and the dark spots. And then we finally get to that fibrous layer that's in that split portion. Contrasted against the cheap AJ1 leather, that's a split leather with a top layer of plastic on top, and take that first cut and we move that plastic and we're immediately to that super fibrous split layer. And then if we go to the Common Projects, the first layer, we're pulling off that top layer of um, finish. And then it looks like we're a little bit into the grain, maybe just a small layer of grain, and then we get to the really fibrous layer. So my best guess is that this is from the top grain area, like a more poor top grain, and maybe this is a younger cow, like a yearling or calf skin, so they don't have as thick of a grain. So it's not the best leather. It's okay. Not the best, not the worst. Now let's check out the insole or the insert and see what's going on in there. So the insert is the chrome tan leather on top and then a layer of poron underneath this teal layer. Poron is just a better foam. It's more shock, shock absorbent. And I also see some little brass nails in here. Uh, what we'll to cut the rest of it in half now to see what else is going on inside of there. Okay, we got it cut in half. Let's see what's inside. This is so strange. There's a shank in here, a metal shank. I have no idea what its purpose is. So let's tear the rest of it out and see what's going on and what all these brass tacks are and what else is in here. This shoe is very perplexing. It's really strange. So let's go through the layers. Starting with the sole, you've got the rubber cup sole that was glued on and stitched on. 
Then you've got a little layer of foam, which I assume acts as a slip sole. Then you've got the compressed cardboard. Above that, you've got the shank, which I don't know why there's a shank in here. It's very strange to me. Above that, you've got the Texon fiberboard, and then we've been through the rest. Oh, and I forgot to mention the brass lasting nails. So the heel must be hand lasted. It's cool. It just it seems strange to me that you would cheap out on some of the materials on the inside, but hand last it with brass nails. So overall, what do I think of the shoe? Is it worth the $450? It's a really strange shoe. I don't, I don't fully understand it. Um, but like we saw with the NYX handmade ultimate work boot, this is around the same price. I have a hard time believing that this takes as much time and money and energy to produce as this. It just kind of feels like a cheap shoe posing or pretending to be an expensive shoe. You know, there's little aspects of it that you might associate with a premium shoe, but all the materials are not great. So what would I do to make this a premium shoe worthy of $425 price tag or basically the same price as these Knicks? I would just load it up full of leather, get rid of all these cheap materials. I have a leather insole, leather midsole, um, get rid of the shank and actually make the upper out of a higher quality leather. And then I think you'd have a, an expensive premium shoe that would last a long time. Let me know what you guys think. Um, am I off on this one? Um, would you pay $425 for cardboard and fiberboard and cheap chrome tan leather? Maybe one day I'll make a premium shoe. That's like my dream is to, to just do small batch production of like ultra high end stuff. So maybe one day. So thanks for your guys' support. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and see ya.